with normal electricity, okay, you have to have a battery source of power, positive and negative, and you have to have a light bulb, some kind of load, right? And if I take my wires and I connect it to the light bulb, like that, the moment I connect it, I can put a switch right here, the moment I connect it, it will light up. The moment I drop that switch, it lights up because the electrons start flowing. What color should we do electrons? Pink, sure. The electrons start flowing this way and they light up the light bulb, okay? So what we do, which is different, the quantum kinetic well is 180 degrees different from this. How do you generate electricity with an open circuit? Now here's the thing, this is what we do, okay? We'll do it in blue, blue's a fun color. So we have a battery. You always have to have some kind of source, okay? What we do is we put a capacitor right there, and actually I'm gonna put the load on the top side. So this is our load, and this is the positive, this is the anode, this is the cathode, and then we're gonna go ahead and attach it to a coil to ground. Now this is very simplified. You can read the patent, it's all there. There's no secrets, really. But what we do in this situation, current, okay, if we close the switch, close the switch. If we close the switch, the electrons go, oh, well, there's a coil there, and oh, there's a capacitor there. I can't go through this. I, I can get through the coil, no problem. And it will make a magnetic field and all that stuff. We'll make a magnetic field, okay. But the magnetic field won't be sustained because the electrons boil right here. And they're like, I, can't, I don't know where to go. So I can't load, I can't light this up. Ah, but can we trick the capacitor to do something for us? Yes, we can. If we pulse this up and down, up and down, the switch, like this, up and down, something happens really weird in the universe. Not the circuit, the whole universe has to adjust to what's going on with the electronic circuit. They figured this out way back in 1889 with the telegraph and Oliver Heaviside, getting into history, but when you switch the telegraph on and off, sometimes in the operating rooms, when they would do the switch, they get hit by a bolt of lightning on the forehead. Yeah, really, and they switch it up and down. And sometimes they would get telecommunications to go across this gap because the aurora borealis was coming in and ionizing the capacitive plates. Thus, parts would jump and hit people in the head for no reason. So they had to disconnect the batteries and everything because they were afraid they were gonna get struck by lightning. So what I'm saying is we are triggering a synthetic aurora borealis event in the wire. And so when that happens, there's a weird phenomenon that occurs right here. In between the two plates, it's a void. It's called a negative differential pressure. It's like you had a straw and you stuck it into a Coke and you sucked the liquid out with the straw. It's the same phenomenon, same. But what everyone else is doing in physics is they take the straw and they stick it into the, the Coke and they blow into it and there's all these bubbles. And then when you stop, nothing really happened. There was only a little bit of fusion, just a little bit. Some of the, some of the Coke popped, off of the, popped out of the Coke uh, glass. Some of it, not all of it, some, small percent. But what we do here is we suck the electrons into the circuit from the dielectric, which is the medium. It could be H2O, 
It could be air. It could be even the vacuum of space, which is crazy, which is true, but it's crazy. So what we do is we suck the electrons into the top part of the circuit and it lights it up. And the weird thing is, is when you have this negative differential pressure of all the electrons falling in, the fusion takes place right here and all the sediment and all that stuff starts occurring. It's just the byproduct of mother nature. It's what she does. And it's called synthetic gravity, essentially. Gravity is a wave. Gravity has a charge. And the reason I know this is because Einstein's equation is kind of right and kind of wrong. Einstein's equation is E equals mc squared. The energy equals the mass times the square of light. Partly right. And maybe why we haven't figured this out yet until now. Because here's the real equation. E equals plus or minus mass times the square of light. Well, we can't equate for negative mass because that's positrons, that's antimatter. We don't, we can't see it, we can't feel it, we can't measure it with our devices, so we just take it out of the equation and we just do this. But it's wrong. The universe is full of antimatter. Actually, there's more antimatter than there is matter in the universe. So we have to take this into the equation. And if we use this in our equation, we can create a negative pressure on one side of the circuit and the universe, Mother Nature, goes, okay, I will readjust. Whoop, and get sucked in. It's called gravity. It's that simple. Remember, if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting different results, and you don't get them, that's the definition of insanity. <laughs>